Time for one of our favorite segments of the week, how the media covered themselves in glory, with, of course, our favorite, Katie Halper, host of The Katie Halper Show and the Useful Idiots podcast at, over at Rolling Stones. Good to see you, Katie. Thanks for joining us. You too. Yes, of course. So we've, we've got some fun stuff lined up for everybody on our friend a uh, friend of the show, Nira Tandon. Uh, let's start off with some of these deleted tweets. She deleted over a 1,000 tweets, right, where she was criticizing senators on Twitter, all because her ghoulish behavior online um, at, might actually cost her a nomination. It's kind of hilarious, isn't it? Well, I think that, you know, something really dishonest, shockingly, that the media is doing is that, um, and that Tandon is doing, and all of her, you know, supporters and surrogates, is that they're pretending that the issue with her tweets is that she's kind of feisty and adversarial with Republicans. And of course, there, there's no doubt that the the Republicans going after her for tweets are hypocrites because they've said awful things or they, you know, supported Trump, who said totally uh, awful things. But the difference is, well, there are a couple of differences. Uh, Tandon also has attacked the left. All right. This is not just like a, a partisan Democrat Republican thing. Um, and we and there are a couple of things. One is we don't I don't think want someone who has this kind of Trumpian tendency, which she does have, to stay up mm -hmm. really late writing tweets and picking fights with people and sending an army. And she uses the hashtag army, okay? She uses that hashtag. So what's happening here is that she has an, a kind of network of abusive bots, and they're real people, some of them, but they are definitely trolls. So let's call them abusive trolls. And, and you know, during the entire primary, um, both of them actually, Tandon spent her entire time asking Sanders to repudiate every single abusive thing said by people who had nothing to do with his campaign, like literally nothing. She did it to she tried to get, you know, Sanders to repudiate David Sirota for policy policy critique of Beto O'Rourke. She mm -hmm. made that seem like some toxic thing. Meanwhile, and I have the receipts, I'll show you next time or I'll tweet them <laughs> out, but I have them, but I have them right here. She hangs out in person with people and wishes happy birthday and calls happy birthday, my friend, and sends like heart eye emojis to people who have called um, Sanders a fake effing Jew. Mm -hmm. um, another one who said Sanders uh, would have won. Sanders would have choked on my D word. Sure. Um, someone else, uh, uh, he also said that uh, trying to, he tweet, this is all public tweets, all public mm -hmm. tweets, said that um, uh, Linda, um, Linda, so her sure. store tweeted something, yeah, tweeted something in solidarity after there was a, you know, an attack on a synagogue, a hate crime. And this guy tweets, who she hangs out with in person, T Nira does, tweets, um, oh, look at Linda acting like she wouldn't have planned something like this. Oof, whew, yeah, so this guy, a... th these people that she, she's, that are part of her army, which she uses, a hashtag army, these people mm -hmm. she wishes happy birthday to, she says, thanks, my friend, she has way stronger connections to than Sanders or anyone has ever had on the left with any of these randos online. She And she weaponizes identity politics like crazy, and she is elevating and signal boosting totally misogynist, racist, in some cases homophobic. I mean, it's, to give her credit, she's very well-rounded in her, yeah, in her like, potpourri of bigotry. Well, um, and, and, uh, and, and to your point, I guess we should call them Nira bros. But I mean, the one that she's most well known for is that story, let's throw this up there, about shoving um, Faz yeah. Shakir while yes. he was working for her. Just break that down. What exactly is this all about? Okay, so this is actually, I, I mean, I almost didn't want to get into the tweets because people are gonna, people are framing this as, oh, it's just mm -hmm. about tweets. It's not about tweets. It's about like a vicious attacks and threatening people and saying an army will come from them. She has said that herself, okay? Mm -hmm. While all at the same time pretending, and I'm just bringing that up as an example because it's a, it's a performative anti-racism, feminism, um, intersectionality. It's absolutely a sham and she weaponizes it. We see that in her in her uh, the abusive tweets that her friends partake in without her saying a single thing. But also we're going to see it after we're going to get back to that. But in terms of the punch, um, this is extremely important. And can you just I'll tell you what happened. Uh, she founded um, she was one of the founders of Center for American Progress um, at the time of this punch at the time at which I can't believe we're saying this about a Democrat. Um, no disrespect, uh, Sagar, but, you know. <laughs> that, you guys have that guy who tackled a reporter, you know, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, Greg Gianforte. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who did well, right? He's fine. He's still around. There you go. Still around. But, um, um, but uh, what happened was she 
was uh, at the time she was Hillary Clinton's aide, but she was also the one of the founders of, of CAP, right? And Hillary spoke at the uh, Center for American Progress, the think tank that she helped found and then would become the director of, near Tanda would have. Right. And someone named Fash Shakir, who was who re- was the executive director of the very then good blog, uh, Think Progress, made the grave mistake of asking uh, Hillary Clinton a question about her position on Iraq. And like every progressive champion, Neera Tandon did what we've all done when we hear someone say something about policy that we don't like. And she, according to witnesses, punched him in the chest. Now, to be fair, as she told the New York Times, I didn't slug him. I pushed him. Did you ever mm-hmm. think we'd hear someone say that? Like yeah, it's kind about of an employee? That's kind of, again, a Trumpian thing, right? Like, right. The bar, like, why isn't the media asking her about this? Ms. Tandon, we know that you were accused of punching and you have admitted to pushing, as you call it. Well, I mean, imagine any Trump nominee or any Trump pick, right, who had had, who had done that. They'd be rightly, rightly called out for yeah, that. Yeah, you'd be like, this is unhinged behavior. This is unhinged it's, okay, behavior. Right. right. This is unhinged, abusive. Not a ret- What about the return to normalcy and civility? Like, that's not even like forget. And the content, her politics and policy uh-huh. are very important. But I think this is so enraging because it is such an F you to all the people that she has antagonized, that her army has gone after, that her army has harassed, that her army has doxxed. It's such a symbolic. We couldn't care less from the Biden administration, from Biden or whoever is running his campaign while he sleeps in the basement. It is such a, uh, you know, a thumb in the eye um, to, to all of the left. Yeah, because it really, you know, that, like he has lots of bad people, bad policy picks who aren't famous for fighting with people. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like totally. Yeah, no, yeah. And I think that's a good point. And let's well, let's even talk about the policy. This is the one that yeah. galls me the most. The Libya yeah. email. Let's throw this up oh there God. on the screen where she talks about how she's like, well, we have debt and they have a lot of oil. I'm like, that's insane. That, I, like yeah. I said, that that's actually, once again, Trumpian in the whole, like, let's just take the oil. So Trumpian. In fact, he said something serious, ser- uh, yeah. similar. I right. read a, que- a quote the other day with um, Useful Idiots, and it was, a, it was who said it, Nero or Trump, and you couldn't tell. But mm-hmm. can you just put that up there once more? I just want to uh, Go ahead, guys. cite something. Sorry about that. Um, because what she's saying is that we live in a deficit. A con- yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. Right? So she goes, we have a giant deficit. They have a lot of oil. Most Americans would choose not to engage in the world because of that deficit. If we want to continue to engage in the world, gestures like having oil-rich countries partially pay us back don't seem crazy to me. Do we prefer cuts to Head Start or uh, WIC or Medicaid? Because we live in deficit politics and that's what's going to be happening. Okay, so what, what she's trying to do there is say, guys, if we don't steal the oil from the countries that we invade, we're not going to be able to pay for, um, you know, the, the, uh, the welfare state to the extent we have it, right? We're not going to be pay, able to pay for entitlements, which is a ridiculous statement and that shouldn't either way. It's a total deficit trolling, deficit hawking statement. But either way, even if that were true, that's not how you compensate for it. You're not like, well, we'd like to have some programs here. So we're going to have to kill a bunch of brown people abroad and then steal their oil. Right. And and I am a Democrat and I run a big Democrat, you know, liberal think tank. So, of course, I'm advocating for bombing countries and stealing their oil. Yeah, um, and, and she not included in that is taking all this money from the UAE, which is really incredible. Right. All right, right. Katie, uh, then, it's a gr- fantastic then breakdown. Me, oh, go sorry, ahead. Go she, ahead. Also told, she also told Hillary Clinton not to support uh, the $15 minimum wage, mm. um, or she advised her advisors not to. Again, that's an email. Um, and the biggest thing, I just want to give people a heads up. Look out, you guys should tweet it with the hashtag, I don't know, uh, near a lived experience. Um, <laughs> Look out for the media, which keeps talking about her lived experience. They keep talking about the fact that she was on Section 8 housing, which is great. And it would be great if her lived experience led her to defend those programs from which she totally, like, rightfully benefited. But instead, what is she doing? She's she's blessed. She works hard. She gets out of poverty. And then she wants to cut the very programs, the very entitlements Mm -hmm. that she's so excited. And there's footage of her doing this. She's so excited to cut. She wants to cut the very things that she benefited off of. Well, that is the no that is the real American dream right there. Yeah. All right, Katie, appreciate you okay. joining us. We'll have more Rising for everybody right after this. <laughs> 